Hi, I'm Luke. Today on Auto Darts, we are checking out what might be my new favorite Springer. This is the Lynx. Let's get right into it. Longtime viewers of this channel know that a lot of my content has revolved around rival blasters. That's not to say that I don't love darts. We recently made this 29 round magazine, which I am thrilled to have on the store. And this blaster, this Lynx, might just be my new favorite Springer of all time. This blaster was printed for me by Ryan over at Silver Fox Industries. He did technically give this to me as a trade. He got a proton pack and I got a fully built Lynx. So let us know in the comments who got the better deal. I think I did. <laughs> uh, I was very happy to get the current version of the Lynx with all the um, nice accoutrements that come with it. Ryan's got some very cool springs that are in different colors that you can use to accent your build. The Lynx is a bullpup high-powered springer. This one is a very smooth, easy prime, yet it shoots 240 to 250 FPS. In basic function, it's a bullpup blaster. The nice thing about a bullpup and a springer is that you've still got a fairly long barrel because the breech starts back here and goes all the way to the tip with an integrated scar at the end. Now, because of that long barrel, you've of course got very good accuracy. This blaster is tuned absolutely perfectly. It performs very, very well with a very easy prime considering the power. It also has one of the best air seals I have ever seen. If I plug the end here, despite that U-channel design with the air going up and around and into the breech, we have a I've never seen an air seal this good. This is just basically perfect, perfect air seal. It will hold um, for a long period of time. It is worth noting that Ryan did tell me not all of them have quite this perfect of an air seal, but they are very good. This one just happens to be exceptional. I mean, what are we, 10 seconds in and it's still holding pressure. Very impressive. The Lynx Blaster is designed by Dan over at Orion Blasters and it is a very innovative design in a number of ways. Uh, first, the bullpup nature is really great. The print orientation and the parts and the designs themselves are very nice. There's almost no support as far as I can tell, maybe zero at all. And it is a very comfortable blaster. It has a wonderful grip, which is very welcomed on 3D printed community blasters. This just feels great in your hand. It's a lightweight blaster. It's very compact. You get that full length barrel in a tiny, tiny form factor. Uh, if I were to compare this to a run of the mill caliber, and you know what, let's not compare it to the caliber and let's compare it to um, apples to apples since this is also short dart. This is my Talon Claw, also built by Silver Fox Industries. And you can just see the profile difference here when you're playing. Uh, and in reality, I believe uh, this actually has the same length, or it's, it's actually a longer barrel uh, because this barrel starts about here. So if I'm kind of lining them up as best I can, let's see here, we're about, those should be about lined up there. So you can see I've actually got about a four inch longer barrel um, and the overall distance, you know, the blaster is very, very short, probably by about seven inches. And that's remarkable for close quarters stuff. It's really nice when you're coming around cover around a tree. It's um, really a comfortable blaster. And the second I picked this up, I could not stop playing with it. And it's been a while since I picked up a blaster and been that excited, uh, at least a blaster that somebody else made or you know, a blaster that a company made because some of, so many of the releases over the last year have been uh, a little sad from, from the Ultra and Elite 2.0 line. I hung out with some Nerf friends for uh, a day and uh, when I got this from Ryan at his place and I could not stop firing it and playing with it all day. I am really, really impressed with the design and uh, Ryan's printing of course is second to none. He's also printing on Prusa printers like we are and dials in his profiles to make sure that everything is printing really, really well. Um, I've seen what some of his uh, I think they're calling them foxed up prints, which are his B grades, the equivalent of our B grades. And they are about what we do for B grades. They're still quite good compared to other uh, printers and other, other makers in the hobby to some extent. Uh, and that really helps, you know, the Prusa helps that out quite a bit because they are very good printers from the ground up. We are gonna do a review video on the Prusa Mark III because we've been running them for about four and a half years now. And we have some pretty good insight on how well they work. Uh, spoiler alert, they're great printers. So ergonomically, this blaster feels just fantastic. It's rock solid. And uh, I know this because I have thrown one of these on the ground. Uh, 
Not gonna get into that story, but Dan, I'm sorry. <laughs> I threw one of Dan's blasters on the ground at some point, and uh, yeah, it, uh, he then immediately told me, oh, it's fine. <laughs> it's built like a tank, and he's not wrong. Um, I feel like this is a little bit less finicky than the Talonclaw and Caliburn um, platforms. One of the things I've, I frequently have with the Talonclaws and the Caliburns is that over time, there's a little bit of play uh, front to back, and you've got to spend some time retightening some of those rods and kind of dialing those in. And at times that can be a little bit, a little bit frustrating. Um, I had this one tightened up and it's sort of, it, they work themselves a little bit more loose. The design of this is such that everything is a little bit more rock solid. We're using extruded uh, aluminum bars up front. I believe Dan cuts all the hardware for this blaster himself. Up front, we've got an integrated scar barrel and this is key to the next point, which is this is the most accurate blaster I have ever fired. This is a, an actual 3D printed scar However, unlike most scars, this is printed in SLA resin. So the layer lines are very, very small. So small that I can't really see them. They are, they are there if you look close enough, but it means that it's a really, really great use of printing and a really accurate blaster. Um, the blaster features two mag releases. It's got one inline here, which I'm learning to use. I may actually end up r removing that to just do the the one in the back. The second one in the back is just triggered by the one in the front, which is really cool. The Lynx is of course Talon compatible, which is great because at this point the Talon mags are pretty much the hobby standard. That does mean it works with our Out of Darts 29 round magazine that we just released in theory. I'm actually shooting this video before we've released it, so that'll be interesting. <laughs> but we'll toss that in there, take a few shots. I'm smiling because I'm, I have a dart catch here, but I'm actually firing past it, which is way more fun. The blaster also features slam fire, which is a nice addition, though I don't think I would actually use it in a game because this thing is so accurate, you're really gonna wanna take your time and take those shots, but it's nice to know that if you want slam fire, you can do it. <laughs> I will say that with this spring, while the spring is very easy to fire, it's a little bit difficult to slam fire because this blaster is performing and delivering the hits. Right now in this, its current form, it shoots about 240 to 250. I'll put up the actual chronograph numbers on the screen. As always, the way we do our chronograph numbers is we've got a competition chrono with a dedicated lighting setup. We've got fabric draped around it to block out ambient light, and we do a 20 shot average, only throwing out misreads or extreme uh, failures due to dart jam or something like that. The bullpup design of the Lynx is honestly kind of perfect for our magazine. And I don't mean to make this a plug for the magazine, but just the way that this fits, it never interferes with your body. It actually sticks out less than it would on a regular magazine or a regular blaster. And so I think that's kind of a happy accident for us that this has kind of become my new favorite combo. Um, I'm gonna try to take this one step further and maybe do like a tri-mag setup, but we'll see how that all fits on my body. I, for one, cannot wait to get back to, to games and be able to put this through its paces at, at a field. We've done some little small warehouse battles with employees here, but it's not exactly an indoor blaster with this spring. It's also worth noting, of course, there are many springs available for this blaster. You can tune it all the way down to HVZ levels, you know, 100, under 130, all the way up to the 250. Uh, mark and I believe if you wanted to go higher you probably can do that as well though personally I think this is about the sweet spot so I'll use this spring for our high FPS games and probably throw something else in for a lower cap I'll put all the links in the description on where you can purchase this blaster from Silver Fox Industries as well as the original creator Dan at Orion Blasters Dan you're doing phenomenal work I am blown away by this blaster this blaster gets a five out of five. It's one of the best things I've touched all year and I couldn't recommend it more highly. We might consider offering them in the future if Dan is interested. I have not had this much fun with a 3D printed blaster in a bit and I think it's a really, really solid platform. So thank you to Dan and uh, to Silver Fox. I think this is going to be one that sticks around for a while and it also fills this nice niche where the, you know, the Nexus Pro and the Dart Zone Pro Mark I and, and those similar blasters haven't done a bullpup design yet, so this is something new. Until next time, I'm out of darts. I have nothing against darts. In fact, um, 
as I hit the magazine release. 